In today's lecture, we're going to talk about energy in a cell. So why would cells need energy in the first place? Well, we've talked about this in the previous unit, um, but first, you know, it's actually the second bullet point on here is active transport. Things, when things are moving from low to high concentration across the cell membrane, uh, the, the cell needs to use energy to do that. Um, and that's one process. Um, any kind of cell movement is going to require energy as well. Uh, and other biological processes um, through metabolism and just life in general, uh, it requires energy. You know, it's one of the characteristics of life. So different organisms um, get energy in different ways. Uh, plants can actually make their own energy from sunlight. Um, and this is the process of photosynthesis. Uh, bacteria, some bacteria are photosynthetic, but others actually make energy from the chemicals they obtain. Um, if you've ever walked by a kind of a, a lower uh, water level creek in the summertime um, where there's a lot of mud, uh, you get to smell that wonderful sulfur rotten egg smell. Um, that's bacteria chemosynthesizing in the mud. Um, they're breaking down uh, sulfur compounds that you found in the mud and actually releasing sulfur dioxide, which smells like rotten eggs. Um, bacteria at the bottom of the ocean do this as well. There is no sunlight down there. Uh, so what they do is they sit along these thermal vents, these places where hot um, uh, geochemical processes occur and, and actually heat up the water. Um, the water then comes out like a geyser at the bottom of the ocean. There's a lot of sulfur compounds inside that, and uh, the bacteria there break down the sulfur and make food themselves. Okay, And this is what starts food chains um, in lightless uh, areas. Uh, animals obtain energy from the food that they actually eat. Now, organisms that make their own energy are called producers. And the more technical term for producer is called an autotroph. Think automatically make their own, uh, make their own food. Uh, organisms that have to eat other organisms for food are called consumers. And the more technical term for that is heterotrophs. Now, however organisms get their food, um, they all have to break it down. And when they do so, um, they're breaking it down into the four major macromolecules that we've talked about uh, last unit. And those are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. Each of these particular um, macromolecules has their own specific function. Uh, and the, the one that we've learned already, lipids, is for storing energy. And the one that we've just learned um, for this unit is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates is the energy molecule. Now, when you eat something, eat like let's say a hamburger, it's filled with all of these things, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And when your body starts breaking it down, it really wants to break it down into these individual pieces that it can then use. Um, these go into your bloodstream, eventually make it to your cells, uh, and specifically the carbohydrates are then broken down in the mitochondria, um, which then can be used for energy. Now, what you have to remember, one of the biggest uh, things that you have to remember for this unit is that bonds are energy. So the more bonds that a molecule has, um, the more energy, in theory, is stored within that molecule. It's going to be kind of a reoccurring theme as we go through the rest of this slideshow. Now, when you eat a hamburger and think about how many carbohydrates could be found in that hamburger. I mean, we're talking millions of carbohydrates. So when they actually get to your cells, um, even one carbohydrate has way too much energy than your cell needs, way too much energy. So what your body has to do is take this big energy source and break it down into smaller bits of energy. Um, you can think of it kind of like, imagine if, if all we had uh, in our in our in our mo in our money system is hundred dollar bills, and you go to McDonald's and you want to buy a hamburger. Well, you'd have to use your hundred dollar bill, but there'd be no change for them to give back to you. It'd be a lot. It'd be a huge waste of money. You'd pay a hundred dollars for a one dollar hamburger, but there's nothing they could do. Um, the same thing is true with your body. If it broke down the carbohydrate and tried to use all that energy at once, most of that energy would be released as heat and would be completely wasted. Um, so the body's first, uh, they digest food, but then once they, the actual the, the carbohydrates get to the cells, they have to break it down into a little bit of energy that it can use a little bit at a time. And this little bit of energy is called an ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. So adenosine triphosphate is made up of 
of four, uh, sorry, five different parts. Um, adenine, ribose, and then three phosphate groups. We talked about phosphate groups before and talking about phospholipids. Um, they're the same thing. They're just in a different molecule here. Uh, these so as food molecules are broken down, what happens is you get you start making ATP, adenosine triphosphate. The way that works is you have adenosine diphosphate, um, and you can see that here, adenosine diphosphate. And what happens is, is a phosphate group is added to the ADP, making it adenosine triphosphate. Now, when your body actually wants to use the energy, it works in reverse. The ATP is broken down into ADP, um, and then you can see into AMP, which is adenosine monophosphate. Going back a slide here, most of the time, um, the transfer process really is just ATP to ADP. Notice the picture here, adenosine, ribose, and three phosphates, adenosine triphosphate, tri meaning three, and notice this last little bond, bonds are energy, last little bond has, has a lot of energy in it, and when your body needs energy, it breaks this little bond here, so that means this phosphate floats away, and now you've got adenosine diphosphate, and then what can happen is when you eat more food, your body rebonds this phosphate back to the ADP, making it into ATP once again. Now there's two types of energies that we find in the universe. There's free energy, energy that is available to do work. This is, these are things like heat and light. Um, and then there's potential energy. Potential energy is energy that is stored. And in biology, energy is stored in those bonds, the bonds in the food molecules and in ATP. Remember I said, bonds are energy. So how do we use cell energy? Well, but more specifically, we talked about you know moving things across membranes, but we, we, we need to make important macromolecules, things like proteins. When you eat cow proteins, um, they need to be reconfigured to be human proteins. That takes energy. Uh, making materials to build membranes and organelles. Obviously, as cells um, divide and, and multiply and, and you're creating more mitochondria, for example, you need to have energy to do that. Maintain homeostasis. It's kind of a key, one of our key um, themes for biology that we talked about in Unit 1. Uh, you got to maintain, uh, maintain it through active transport, um, body temperature, uh, blood sugar. All of these things are important to maintain a balance that we've talked about in the past. And there's other functions, things that we don't possess things like bioluminescence um, when you see a uh, firefly in the summertime uh, blinking away that takes energy to do that um, movement obviously is an easy one uh, growth takes energy you know when a, when, a, when a plant is out you know and you plant a seed and it starts to grow that, that's all going to take energy and that's it for this slideshow um, feel free to watch it again if you need a refresher um, I hope you enjoyed it